Hi, this is Trey Pastor, and welcome to the Horoscope 101 channel. It's Saturday, so it's my day. And this week on the Horoscope 101 channel, it's Romantic Horror Week. And the movie that I chose to, you know, for this week, for this week's theme is uh, The Bride of Frankenstein, which is part of the uh, Universal Legacy set. Uh, that's part of the Frankenstein set right there, of course, Karloff. Okay, this is, of course, the sequel to... Uh, 1935 uh, to 1931's, I, be, I believe, Frankenstein. And in this one, it, as it says on the uh, movie poster, the monster demands a mate. <laughs> okay, this movie actually uh, takes, you know, picks up where you think, like I said, this is, this could be spoilers in this, so people be forewarned, there are going to be spoilers in this, in my view. Okay, uh, basically at the, the events of, at the end of Frankenstein, you know, you assume that the monster perished in the fire, and the Henry Frankenstein, because he got thrown from the windmill, he, that he died as well, but of course he didn't. And the movie actually opens with uh, Mary Shelley, uh, you know, author Mary Shelley, her husband, and Lord Byron, a uh, stormy night. And, and of course, you know, Lord Byron is regaling in the, the, the story of uh, how Mary Shelley came up with such a great, fantastic story that it's so horrific that you know, nobody's going to publish it. Okay, and of course she's, you know, she says, of course, somebody will publish it eventually, and of course she said, but that's not the end of the story. Okay, so she proceeds to tell the tale, which actually begins again at the windmill. Of course, when Henry, after Henry, you know, Henry Frankenstein, after being thrown from the, the windmill by the creature, uh, is, is taken back uh, to his uh, fiance, and the creature who, you know, everybody just assumed that he he perished in the fire because the fire, you know, goes down and everybody mostly everybody leaves. But of course, you find out that Henry Frankenstein is not dead. He's, you know, he's alive barely, but he's still alive. And the creature who they assume perished in the fire actually survived the fire. Okay, and he proceeds to uh, <laughs> go about, you know, go about his uh, <laughs> business. Okay, and then this movie begins with a visit while Henry Frankenstein is healing from his uh, uh, one of his teachers when he was in college, Doctor Pretorius. Okay, who um, proceeds to tell him Frankenstein that that like like Frankenstein himself, he is experimenting with life as well. You know, instead of uh, creating life from dead bodies, he's created life by uh, uh, organically by growing them. Okay, but only in miniature size. And there's a great sequence where they actually show his miniature sized versions. Okay, of the life he's created. Okay, and he basically uh, tells Frank, you know, Frank Henry Frankenstein that. He, he wants him to collaborate with him on a uh, an experiment of uh, making uh, another dead body, a, a, a companion of sort for the for the uh, for the creature for this for his Frankenstein monster. But of course, Frankenstein doesn't want anything to do with it. Okay, he's you know he's he feels that he's been cursed, you know, for you know tempting fate by um, you know you know for defying God by creating life. So he wants nothing to do with Dr. Pachoris, okay? Meanwhile, the creature, you know, after being, you know, the, when they, the villagers discover that he's alive, they, of course, they chase him down and, and, and capture him and throw him in the dungeon, and, of course, he proceeds to escape. And, of course, then you have a classic scene that's uh, where the creature stumbles upon it in the woods, and he stumbles upon a blind man, and you get a great, one of the most famous sequences I think in the movie itself, where he stumbles upon a cabin with a blind man who takes him in, befriends him, actually teaches him stuff, feeds him, and actually, you know, to, becomes a friend to him. And of course, this goes all to hell when uh, hunters stumble upon the camp, uh, stumble upon the cabin, and proceed to, uh, you know, chase the creature out and burn and take his friend away from him. So of course, he's angry, of course, and he stumbles upon Doctor Pretorius, who's. Uh, uh, acquiring uh, uh, a body for you know the experiment of creating a, a bride for the for the creature, and he proceeds to tell the creature that he's gonna that he's gonna create a companion for him, of course, and of course that's what the creature wants. He wants to be he wants somebody you know a companion, someone to love. So you know, hence the bride of the title. And of course, he knows that Dr. Pretorius knows that uh, Henry Frankenstein doesn't want to want to do you know he want, doesn't want to do this, but he proceeds to get the creature to kidnap uh, Henry's uh, wife, so that way 
and you know, Frankenstein basically passed it to help create, you know, a companion for the creature. Of course, and they proceed to do that. Okay, and like I said, this movie I absolutely love. This is probably one of the uh, better sequels to a horror movie, or, or movie, any movie in general, period. And, and mainly it's because of uh, of fellow, not fellow Lugosi, <laughs> Boris Karloff is the creature. He, you know, you feel so much for his character. You know, he's just this creature that didn't want to be created, who just wants a, to be left alone and wants, you know, someone, a friend, you know, and and you see it so much, especially in that sequence when he's with the uh, blind man in the cabin and basically the you know, man friends him and heals him up and, and teaches him stuff and, and feeds him and just, you know, be a general friend and teaches him stuff. And for the first time, he's been somewhere where he's been accepted. And it's just a great feeling. And then it goes all to hell when these hunters stumble upon the cabin and stuff. And so, of course, he, you know, when Dr. Petraeus tells the creature, of course, we're going to create a, a companion for you, someone for you to love, to be your friend. And, of course, he wants that. Of course, so he does what he has to do, you know, by kidnapping, you know, Henry's wife. And to, so Henry could be, have incentive to help create the creature a bride, a mate, you know, hence the title, you know, you know, on the poster, you know, the monster demands a mate. <laughs> okay, and it's a great, you know, that you that, then you get that great sequence. Oh, yeah, also, let me say, uh, Colin Clive is, of course, is, is, is good, too, as Henry Frankenstein. I thought he was good. Too, and they of course changed actresses uh, uh, to play Henry's wife. Okay, and because I think the original actress, May, uh, May Clark, I think they said she had a, just a little fact that she had a, I think she had a, a breakdown because they said she was overworked because she worked with two studios at the time. So of course he was available to work on a sequel. So they cast uh, Valerie Hobson, who also, another fact, starred also in uh, The Werewolf of London at the same time. I think they were filming it those movies back to back and then she was in that as well. Anyway, like I said, Boris Koloff makes the movie and also Elsa Lancaster as the bride of the title. She is great. She also plays Mary Shelley in the beginning of the movie. Okay, who's telling the tale. But she also plays the uh, the bride of the title. Okay, and and she's great and I think she only has about ten minutes of screen time. Maybe ten minutes, not maybe maybe even less than that, you know, as the as the bride who gets resurrected. Uh, <laughs> Of course, and then of course she uh, kind of rejects, you know, <laughs> she rejects her, you know, when the monster sees the, you know, the creature, he goes to her, and, and he, you know, and there's a great, a great sequence where they're sitting on the bench, <laughs> and you know, he and he grabs her hand and and basically he tries to say Fred, Fred, and then and of course he proceeds to scream the blood, scream bloody murder, and rejects him, and of course, you know, so as a romantic partner. He strikes out, and of course, that leads to the great scene where uh, Fanny's Frankenstein's wife, you know, she escapes from where she's been captured, and she implores Henry to come with her, and he, and then of course the creature tells him, yeah, yeah, you go, live, and he tells Petraeus, you stay, and then of course he grabs the, the famous, I don't know why they had the switch there, but the famous lab destroying switch, and tells him, you go, you go, you live. We belong dead, and then that's when he proceeds to pull the, the device and blow himself and the, and the uh, bride and uh, got to protest all the bloody hell. <laughs> and it's just a great movie. It's a great mix of comedy, drama, and uh, and horror, and even the romance of the title. Okay, because basically the, the monster creature wanted some, he wanted someone a companion, someone that you know, someone that he can have a friend and this someone that didn't hate him and, and then of course he gets rejected by this creature who only was I think only alive for like maybe 10 minutes <laughs> in, uh, in the movie just to, about 10 minutes and of course she rejects him and so this is kind of a bad romance <laughs> in a way and which you kind of feel you know you feel for Forrest Carlos's creature's character because this is a creature that didn't want to be created didn't ask to be created but he's here and of course, he's all been basically treated as a monster and rejected and hunted and chased down. And, and all he wanted was, you know, a friend, basically, you know. And then he gets promised that he's going to get a, a companion, a woman, someone he can, you know, someone like himself that he can love. And of course, what happens? That that creature 
rejects him. So it's really a, a, and a tragedy as well. So it's, uh, it's kind of tragic. It's kind of tragic romance in a way. <laughs> I guess that's it'd be a better apt description of it. I guess. But it's a great movie, great sequel, and like I said, I love the the Universal uh, Marx horror classic. That's so. You know, this is one of the best movies. Like I said, and Forrest Collar was the creature. He by far the best uh, uh, creature in all of the Universal uh, horror movies. Okay, okay, so that's my uh, review for Bride of Frankenstein. Let me know what you think. Uh, again, uh, tune in to uh, tomorrow. I don't know if Claire is participating this week uh, for Romantic Horror. But if she, anyway, tune in tomorrow. You'll find out. Okay, and tune in to everybody else's channel, you know, that does, you know, the videos on this channel. You know, the DVD Collector 1974. You got Rossi Boy 19. You got the Joker 5150. Uh, uh, Chris Kitty, <laughs> and let's say uh, Claire, I don't know if she's going like, to do a video, and then of course myself, tune in to our individual channels, because we all make uh, great channels on our own, and plus, I'm glad to be part of this collaboration channel, the Horoscope 101, uh, this is a great bunch of guys and girls, okay, so tune in, okay, and this is Trey Pastor saying so long, and take care.